All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahavashai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching His word of sincerity and truth. All right, I'm my brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another show, another lesson. As always, you know, I pray to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahavashai, that these lessons will be edifying to those of the hopeful elect. All right. And uh, this lesson was based off um, the elder, Elder Manatazak. All right. Um, you know, he did a show yesterday that I seen. It was part four of his series. And um, he spoke about how the government omits its studies UFOs. You know, so the government now omits about what they call UFOs, which means unidentified flying objects. Well, us men of the Lord, start with our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, you know, we have, uh, the Most High have woken us up and given us the understanding, you know, of what they called UFOs. You know, we call them IFOs, identifying flying objects, because we identify them through the scriptures, through the Bible. All right. And there's many, plenty of verses that the ancient prophets, all right, they saw, they seen. And they recorded it, okay? Meaning they wrote it down and they, they spoke about what they saw. You know, the Most High gave them eyes that they could see, man. Okay? Um, damn, as I'm speaking, I'm thinking of the scripture. Uh, bear with me one second. Let me see something real quick. I'm thinking of a scripture. I just need to see if I can find it. Give me one second. Um... Write it down, come back to it. So, um, you know, um, right. And, um, you know, so this is, this is, uh, breaking news, man. You know, this is breaking news. And, um, the elder, elder Manatazak, all right, he did a, you know, always a beautiful job going over the scriptures because you get edified, you know, by our apostles and elders, you know, it don't matter what topic of the video it is, you get edified. And, and in this case, you know, he edified us with the update, man. He edified us. You know of that what the times that we're living in you know the elder also pulled out um um second edges the ninth chapter all right um you know what i'm gonna get that i'm gonna get that you know um okay i'll come back to this uh okay second address nine and one you know it says he answered me then and said measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou sees parts of the signs pass which I told thee before, then shalt thou well, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world in which he made. Well, hi. All right. Now he says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world in which he made, man. All right. So. The Lord is visiting this place, okay? He's showing us signs in the heavens through this, through his angels, the chariots, 
exactly showing the signs in the earth as far as the prophecies. You know, there's a lot of people being microchipped right now, you know, and soon the Lord is gonna, gonna turn it up. He's gonna allow these devils to force, you know, to force, you know, to cause, you know, to what? Receive a microchip in their right hand or their forehead, man. And that is the mark of the beast, man. You know, so you got volcanoes erupting, you got sinkholes in the earth, you got sedition, you know, among men out there in Venezuela. All right, so you got things that are brewing, man. You know, and soon it's gonna reach a climax, man, to the point where the whole world is in, in is in trouble. You know, because why? Yahweh Shai is gonna return, man. You know, and um, we just yet waiting for this time, man. So it says, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. It says, therefore, when that when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, and we've seen a lot of this through time after time, you know, scriptures tell us in um, Habakkuk, he said, wait for it because it shall surely come. Though it tarry, wait for it. So he told us how we have to wait. You know, sometimes brothers get excited. Sometimes brothers, um, you know, they get real zealous because we want out of here. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. But also, you know, we have to learn patience. And the Lord teaches us how to be patient. You know, that, that, that's, that, I'm, I'm going to get it real quick. Because, uh, you know, instead of me quoting it, right? Let's get that real quick. Uh, do, do. You know, these are my favorite scriptures as well, man. These scriptures, we just know. You know, it's just there. You know, it's just, it's just there. It says, Habakkuk chapter 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon and set me upon the tower and i will watch to see what he will say unto me and what i shall answer when i am reproved so habakkuk as just as well as the rest of the prophets they were set up to be watchmen you know the most High got spies man we're spies man <laughs> you know but righteous spies man we're watching out for what the wicked we're looking for seeing what the wicked is going to do we're also waiting to see what the lord is going to do because the Lord set up the prophets to be the mouthpiece. And they're out there speaking the truth, man. Okay? So it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon a tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. It says, and the Lord answered me, Yahweh, and Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. And these is out. And today, this is the way. And how we write the vision, okay? We write the vision, okay? Because brothers see, brothers brothers report, you know? We do epistles like these, sit downs. Uh, brothers prophesize on the corners and streets and the, and the marketplace, man. And whatever state they at, whatever country they at, all right? So it says, write, it says, um, write the vision, make it plain. And we make it plain. We make it, the, the, the truth is so plain right now that, people can't believe it that's how you know the most high is bad man because the truth is plain prophecies are there it's speaking but the lord got two-thirds of our people blinded man you know because only the elect is going to wake up and see it but the truth is plain so it says write the vision make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it and what it mean by run meaning that he what he run toward the most high, man. He run toward Yahweh Shai. All right? You repent, okay? You uh, you get in line. You know, you humble down. You know? Ask the Lord for forgiveness, man. And then you endure, all right? Being being as a new creature in Yahweh Shai. You know? We're running a race, man. All right? And this race is a marathon. And I ain't talking Nipsey Hussle. You know, he kind of stole that word. You know, we've been, you know, the apostles, elders... They've been talking about how this truth is a race, you know, but it's not a sprint, a 40-yard dash. It's actually a marathon, man, all right? But every time you say marathon now, you think of that guy, Neighborhood Nip. He, like, he kind of stole that word for himself, you know, because that was his slogan, you know, this is a marathon. But now nah, the marathon is the race in his truth, the patience in his truth, all right? So now here's the point. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak. And right now, we're seeing it speaking, man. I got an article. You know, I'm just, I'm just re, you know, just, just 
uh, land backing off the elder Monoctazak because he did the show, man. I advise brothers to go to his channel, uh, GMS Contender for uh, for Truth. Yeah, you need to go to his channel and watch his uh, series part four. You know, he, he went into it, man. And he said he got more to come, man. You know, um, let me get there. I'm gonna get back to the article. Let me see if I can pull it back up. Where was I at? Yeah, you know, because this is breaking news, man. The government admits it studies UFOs. Well, we should say IFOs, identifying flying objects. All right, how do they study them? Because they're Esau, you know, he gives a diligent search. All right, he get, and I'm gonna get the scriptures and get some more scriptures. He gives a diligent search, man. You know, when he gets his mind, and his eyes fixed on something, he goes deep. He reads, he studies, he link things together. Unlike Jake, you know, what's the thing is they say in the world, if you want to hide it, if you want to hide it from Jake, just put it in a book because they know Jake won't read shit, you know? Well, guess what? The prophets, okay, the elect of the most high, they read. The scriptures say, blessed he that readeth. And they, and I'm, and it's not talking about novel books. It's not talking about um, all these other books that man made. It's talking about the inspiration and the spirit of the of the scriptures, man. The whole, the Rakakwadash, okay, that the Lord placed upon these brothers to, to uh, get understanding. All right, our Father Yahweh gives us the knowledge, uh, understanding, and wisdom, man. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay, and this is how we know all things, man, through Him, because through Him we wouldn't know nothing, man. We just you know, uh, dirt and ashes, man. You know, as the scriptures say, why is dirt and ashes proud? How can you be proud when you're nothing but dirt and ashes, man? You know, but um, it says the government admits it studies UFOs, man. So there you go. So let me finish off Habakkuk. Um, okay, I'm going to finish off Habakkuk. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak, and it's speaking. Now, now, all of a sudden, Esau want to admit that there's flying saucers that fly through our heavens, that fly through our skies. Okay, you know they. But you don't let the you let them tell it. They tell you that it's green monsters, grays, greens, big eyes, short guy, you know, short creatures, and they very intelligent. And they come from a different planet. You let them tell it. You're going, you're going to learn of a lie, man. All right? The, these chariots are the angels of the Most High riding in their vehicles, man. Going as they please. All right? Doing the will of the Most High. Okay? And they're, and they're men. Okay? And they're brothers. Our brothers, man. You know? That, that works for us, which are the children of Israel. Okay? And this particular today, the elect, man. You know? They're the angels, man. And I got a, I got some scriptures I'm gonna bring out to prove that in the Bible that the angels been showing themselves as far as the vehicles and their chariots, you know, showing signs. That's been written from long ago, man, from the very beginning. All right. Hold up, I got, got another scripture. <laughs> got another scripture. Let me do we uh, uh let me see something. Let me let me let me see something real quick. Ancient of Days. Here's the definition of. Because. <laughs> scripture real quick. Yeah. Alright, let me get that one in there. Since that came in mind. Right? Alright. Alright, so, um, you know, I read Habakkuk. Let me finish it off. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. So the end is speaking, man. The end is speaking. If you can't see prophecy, then <laughs> most high have you blinded, man. <laughs> you know, you have a strong delusion, man. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. So we see that it tarry, you know, and because that it tarry, this, 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 this is the, uh, 
uh, this is why scoffers scoff, you know, because they believe that, you know, that what we say is not going to come to pass. All right. You know, they, 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 uh, they're not faith. They don't have any faith. They're faithless. All right. You know, they're faithless, man. And they like to mock, you know, when, when, uh, things don't come to pass, you know, because, you know, it feels like they winning, you know, but in all reality, you're actually losing. You know, so it says, um, though they tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So these prophecies, they sometimes they tarry, then it comes. But soon, but like this, but the, what Habakkuk is saying is that he said, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So when the, when this thing hit, it's coming, man. When they force the RFID microchip, it's coming. All right. Ain't no stopping it, man. You know? Uh, in the Apocrypha, it tells us how these uh, prophecies are like a woman in travail, you know, a woman being pregnant, you know, she go through them birth pains. So if you understand a woman, you know, for you women out there that do watch, you know, if you had a child before, you know, you understand that when you had your child, you know, you, were, uh, you know, go through your birth pains, you know, your centimeters will open up, you know, first off, your water will break, your centimeters will open up, you know. And uh, the doctor be telling you, you four centimeters or you three centimeters or you six or whatever. And they say the baby is coming. When that baby's coming, you know, it's a process. But guess what? You can't stop the process until the process is fully, fully, fully went through. You know, so when that child head is coming out, here you are in pain, you know. And then all of a sudden the pain may stop because the child may stop coming, you know, for a second. And you get a moment, you get a minute, 60 seconds, and then and you got to keep pushing. That's how the prophecies are, man. All right. So, you know, with that being said, man, I want to get back to Second Edges 9. I'm going to finish it up and go into the article. It says Second Edges chapter 9. It says chapter 9, verse 2. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world in which he made. So now you should have understanding of that this is the time the Lord is visiting. Look at a few months ago. You had the super moons, man. All right. You still got blood moons. Me and my son, we was watching a blood moon the other day, man. You know, um, you had volcanoes erupting. You had out there in Russia, the waters was turning red, just like it was back when Moses struck the water with, uh, with, the, uh, with the staff and it turned blood, man. These are signs, man, whether you believe it or not. These are the signs, the angels formation. Uh, matter of fact, the brother Rob Mayim was hitting. I was talking to that brother uh the other day yesterday and uh he was telling me how in the main camp uh i think uh, last week they saw chariots man chariots lined up in in uh in, in um in order man you know like like birds man those are signs man all right so there you go man it says verse four then shall thou well understand that the most high speck of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. All right, so the end is manifesting, and that's why these uh, these Edomites, the government, they are now are admitting that there are UFOs, which we understand we call them IFOs because they are the chariots of God, the chariots of Yahweh. Okay, there was those those are the most most highs uh, eyes, man. Those are the most highs uh, 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 swiftness. You know, his 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 air force, if you want to say. The chariots that fly low, man, that, that can um materialize and dematerialize. Alright. So <laughs> you you in trouble, Esau, because these chariots are the chariots that go across the face of the earth. And I'ma get that since I said it. So I'm gonna get that first scripture. Uh Zechariah. Let's get that first scripture, right? Um Okay. Zechariah chapter 5 and verse 1. Okay, so it says, Then I lifted up, it's like it, then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying robe. So Zechariah, okay, he saw a chariot. Same chariots that fly in the heavens where Esau sees, and they chase them with their fighter jets. You know, they try to, well, they, they try to keep up, they can't chase it, they got to keep up. Because the chariot can 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 drop at a dime and speed up in a second, man. You know? It can take off. It can dematerialize on you. 
it could materialize right in front of your face. So you Edomites, you are in trouble. You are in trouble, man. And the Lord is visiting this earth and which he made, man. Ooh, getting pumped up, man. Let's go. Zechariah chapter 5 and 1. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked and behold, a flying roe. Okay? And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roe. And the length thereof is 20 cubits and the breedeth thereof is 10 cubits. So Zechariah was describing what he saw. He looking up, he's measuring it to his best of to the best of his ability, man. You know, it says, then said he unto me. It says, then said he unto me, this is the curse. Notice, now pay attention, man. <laughs> you know, now pay attention. Um, verse three, then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. All right, for every one that still of shall be cut off on that on this side, according to it, and every one that swear false that swear shall be cut off on that side according to it. All right, so these these chariots, these angels, are curse. Okay, until you Edomites, because you raped and pillaged and robbed and murdered. The, the, the so-called native and Seminole Indians for this land. You made this land your land and you took it by blood. You took it by the force of the sword and you never let us go. You never let up because the scriptures say he that, uh, uh, he that uh, roughly paraphrasing, he that had the continuous stroke. Okay, so you never let up even to this day. Look where the uh, so-called native Indians are at. Look where the so-called uh, Seminole Indians are at on reservations, man. You know, getting drunk out of their mind, committing suicide, you know, uh, doing all types of shit, man. Doing a lot of drugs. You know, people today, they don't even normally see a Gadite or a Reubenite, you know. You don't see them as much as you see these other, uh, other tribes, man. All right. But guess what? You know, some of these other tribes are Gad and Reuben. Little do they know. You know, a lot of uh, Negroes could be Gad or Reuben, you know, a lot of the Simeons, you know, could be Gad. Hey, you know, the Lord got us spread it, but they're still here. But what I'm trying to say is you Edomites, you, you raped, robbed and murdered. All right. And you think that you would never be taken out of your power, but you are, man. Lock in. All right, cool. I got a little bit of time. Excuse me, but um, you know. Doing plantation, still doing plantation work, you know. Um, all right, let's get back. This is Zechariah chapter 5 and 3. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. So, when you're studying the so called UFOs, know that they are a curse unto you, man. Okay, Esau, it says, For everyone that stilleth, let me let me sit up for you. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on that side according to it. I will, verse 4, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts. So the Lord said he's going to bring them forth. Okay. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. You see that, man? And this is why you're seeing the chariots of the Most High. The IFOs. You're seeing them a lot more. Okay? You've seen them in the past, but today you're seeing them a lot more. And this is why they're going across the face of the whole earth. They're not just seen in Babylon, which is America. They, they, they're seen all over the world, man. Russia, China, you know? All over the world, man. Okay? So it says, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. 
and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of the house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Okay? So the Most High is going to also use these angels, all right, to destroy this place that you call North America, man. These are your worst nightmare, Esau. These are our vehicles and our ships to get up out of here. You brought us over here on cargo slave ships. Well, we going back in style, all right, in the chariots, man. <laughs> you know, you brought us over here in an ugly way, man. Jake shitting and peeing on each other. It was so bad, Jake was jumping off, just killing him, committing suicide, you know, and leaving a trail for sharks, man. You know, Jake, it was horrible, man, how we got here, man. You know, the way these devils dragged us into those uh, cargo slave ships and took us across the world, man. Okay? But we're going to leave this place and from you in style, man, in the swiftness, man. Right? All right? Uh, verse... Um, Verse 5, then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, lift up, lift up now thou eyes and see what is this that, that goeth forth. All right, so Zechariah was talking to the angel. He was looking at a chariot. It says, and I said, what is it? And he said, this is the ephi that goeth forth. He said, moreover, this is their remembrance through all the earth. <laughs> Woo, boy. Let me read that again. And I said, what is it? And he said, this is the ephod that goeth forth. He said, moreover, this is their remembrance through all the earth. So when you see them, when you see those chariots, you better remember Zion, man. You better remember Israel. You better remember that we are the true Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> all right. Because if you remember, if you understand what they are, then you understand what we are, man. You know? And it's going to be a little lengthy show, man. It's 27 minutes in. All right. And I got a few more precepts. Um, let me get, uh, let's get the, let's get this Daniel 7 and 9. Let's go there. Let's get Yahweh, the most high. All right. Uh, this is Daniel's chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit. All right. So this is talking about the heavenly father. Okay. Whose garment was white as snow and his hair and his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So what you think was, was around the most high, man. All right. Those angels, those chariots, what you call UFOs, man. All right. Spinning. As they spin, twirling as they twirl, moving in their swiftness. Okay. It says, um, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the uh, the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. So showing you the heavenly father, all right. He had a garment on, white as snow, man. And you cats laugh at us. That means when you're laughing at us, you're laughing at your own inheritance of your attire that you wore and your, your culture and your customs. And you also mocking and laughing at the Heavenly Father because he wore a garment. Okay? And Yahweh shot. So it says, uh, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head were uh, his head of his head like pearl wool. Alright, so showing you the Heavenly Father is a so-called black man. Alright? Just like Yahweh Shah, he was of the tribe of Judah. He was he today will be considered a so-called black man. All right. But in which we're not black with different shades of brown. I'm not black. I'm just a chocolate brown, man. All right. And my brothers out there through the other tribes are different shades of brown, man. You know, the northern kingdom, they're brown, too. OK. The only one that doesn't have brown to them is you Edomites, man. OK. You're actually red. Everybody else on the earth is has brown to them. It has melanin. But you Edomites, you're actually red, man. Your blood show forth through your skin, man. And this is why your forefather, uh, Esau, in the Hebrew, his thing was a Shashawan. A Shashawan, which means wasted away is he, man. Okay, wasted away. And what was wasted away? The pigment of his skin, man. Okay, this is why you Edomites look the way you look. Going back to what? Cain and Abel. All right, the curse that came upon Cain. Okay, 
when he turned lepers, you you go even before that, you know, when you had melanin, when you was a, a brown, let me say a different shade of brown man, when you go back to the serpent, man, okay, so um, let's get back, Daniel 7 and um, and uh, verse, verse 9, it says, his throne was like a fiery flame and his wills as a burning fire, man. And that's what the chariots look like. It looks like in a burning fire, man. All right. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. What was that? <laughs> thousands, thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him, man. The judgment was set and the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great one, the great words which the horn spec, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. All right, so that's that, man. Oh, wait, let me see if it's a little more on the intro to this poem. Oh, uh, let me see if it's a little more. Let me read some more. Verse 12, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, uh, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like son, the Son of Man came with the cloud. Oh, yeah. Verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Well, another name for the angels or what you call UFOs are clouds, man. Okay. The clouds of heaven. That's another name for them. It says, and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him, man. So those are the Lord's vehicles, man. Okay. These are the heavenly father's vehicles, man. Chariot is the same thing that you, um, you call cars. Your car is a chariot. It's a vehicle to get you from one place to the other. You know, we used to ride in horse and carriage. We used to ride in chariots, man. You used to have two horses to a, a saddle, man. You know, or to a, a, you know, I don't know what to call it. You know, you go back to, um, you know, you do a lot of that when you go back to the, um, uh, what was that, uh, you know, uh, was it in, in Rome? The gladiators, look at those movies and they was riding with horses. And, you know, they was riding on what? They're chariots, man. All right. Um, I think that's it for that. Let me, let me read some of the article that I have. Because this is going to be real long. Let's see. Let's see here. Bear with me. All right. I'm going to try to make it quicker. All right. The government admits it studies UFOs. So about those Area 51 conspiracy theories, that's the title. This is from, um, uh, this is from the Washington Post. All right. Uh, let's see what they got in here. For decades, Americans were told that Area 51 didn't really exist and that the U.S. government had no official interest in aliens or UFOs. Statements to the contrary, official sounding people, cautious, were probably the, it says probably of a crack pipe and tin for you hacks. It says, well, score one for the crack pots. The Pentagon, the Pentagon, has officially confirmed that there was, in fact, a 22 million government program to collect and analyze anonymous aerospace threats. Government speaks for UFOs. All right. It says, as the Washington Post, Juby Warwick reported, the advanced aviation threat uh, identification program was a, ra a rare in, uh, instance slacky, excuse me a rare uh, instance of continued government investigation into a UFO phenomenon that was the, sub the subject of multiple official inquiries in the 1950s and 1960s it says for a specific segment of the population that doesn't that does not need to google the term paradise ranch or Chesakat airstrip, it was a eureka moment, the first of presumably many alien-related secrets 
that have slipped out of the, cl the clenched jaws of the government. It says the non-Googlers have it easy, it seems. The omission and the fact that the government spent 22 million on UFO research. You know, I could read more and more, but you know, I'm gonna leave it at that. It's pretty lengthy, man. All right, and there's a video here. There's a video showing you that they was what they was they was following a UFO. It was an aircraft, man. All right, following one of the Lord's chariots, man. You know, so let me um get to another scripture. Now this is Second Kings six and seventeen. All right, I want to get this. I haven't gotten this in a long time. Um, all right, so the government admitted it, man that what ufos exist all right which we know to be ifos identifying flying objects now this is second kings chapter 6 and 17 and elisha prayed and said lord i pray thee open his eyes that he may see and the lord opened his eyes of the young men and he saw matter of fact yeah i'm gonna just read it get into it and he saw and behold, the mountains was full of the horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Okay, so you have Elisha and the young man, you know, which Elisha prayed to the Lord. And he wanted the young man to see the angels because the young man couldn't see the angels there, man. Okay, let me see if I can read into it. Um, this is verse 14. It says, therefore, sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of the Most High was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city about with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, At last, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for that, uh, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So Elisha was saying, Look, man, just like today, you know. It seems as though we don't have a power, we don't have um, an army, but we do because we have the word of the Most High. We have the name, all right? You know, the Most High acknowledge us, all right? He's showing more signs in the heavens. So when you think that we're outnumbered, we're actually more in number than you because we have the angels, man. We have, we have the angels that ride swift in those chariots, man. The same thing as Elisha was saying, man, all right, to the young men. So... It says, um, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Okay, because Esau, you carnal. You have your, you know, you have your air force, you have your navy, you got your military, your foot soldiers, you know, and you bring your band of your band of men around to see someone. You know, you have your little smaller programs like your police, you know, you have your different sets of branches of military, you know. But guess what? It's we're more in number with the most high than you are. All right. More than you can see. It says. Um, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes. That he may see and the Lord, Yahweh, open his eyes of the young man. And he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. All right, and that was the chariots, that was the angels, man. Okay, and when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord Yahweh and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So Elisha had power, man. He had power to call up to the angels, well, to the Most High. Let me say that. He had power to call to the Most High. And he had authority over the angels the Lord gave to him, man, that was riding those chariots. And what these men do, they blinded those soldiers that was round about them, man. You know? And you think that the Lord ain't going to give us that power again? Elisha, hey, he could be back, you know? And he's going to receive that power in the latter end, man. You know? This is the power. This is why Paul said, uh, uh, we judge, uh, um, do ye not know we shall judge angels? You know? Roughly paraphrasing. Because how much things that pertain to this life, you know, we're going to judge angels, man, on a higher level. We're going to be able to have rule and to tell the angels, the celestial, to do things for us, man. Not that we're going to be judging them because they're going off. No, we're just going to have the judge over them 
far as a rule, a power over them, an authority, all right, to, to work with us, man, okay? Because of the power of the Most High, man, being on one accord. So it says, I'm going to read again. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And that the Lord opened his eyes in the young man, of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. It says, verse 18. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, it's like it, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. All right? So there you go. There's another uh, scripture that speaks about the angels of the Most High. All right? They're just not showing and flying by for no reason. And they're not coming for our resources. They're going to take us and make us into like these TV shows. They got these, uh, you know, uh, they called the UFOs coming into our land. They took us over. They made us their slaves. And, man, you better get out of here with that shit, man. These are the angels, man. These are, uh, they, they, they're going to deliver the elect of Israel, man. All right? They work with us. Okay? They work with, they work for the Yahweh Shemi Shai, man. So let me get another one, which is quick and to the point. This is, uh... This is Revelations chapter 1 verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. All right, who? It's talking about Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Why is every eye going to see him? Because he's going to have a band of angels everywhere, man. That's going to flood the heavens, man. All right? So when you see a chariot, you're going to know that's Yahweh Shai, man. And ultimately... Hey, he's coming on the father shit, man. The one of the chariots that's bigger than all the rest, man. Just like they uh, depicted in the movie Independence Day. What do you think that these directors and actors, well, excuse me, directors, uh, the ones that put the scripts together, what do you think they got their inspiration from? What do you think they got their uh, thoughts from? They didn't come up with their own thoughts. The Most High gave them them thoughts. The Most High led them to watch us, to watch the apostles and elders, man. To watch the videos that's put up about UFOs, man. And then they put their twist on it, man. All right? There's nothing that we can think of that the Heavenly Father haven't already thought of already, man. All right? And that goes for us as Hebrew Israelites, the children of the Most High, you know? Just as well as you heathens, you're doing nothing new under the sun. There's nothing, like the scriptures say, there's nothing new under the sun, man. All right? So it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced, which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so our money. All right, so hey, that's Yahweh Shai. Okay, uh, get one more. Get one more. Uh, Isaiah 66 6, 15. You know, it's a, it's, it's a lot of scriptures, man, on the chariots, man. You know, uh, Isaiah 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. All right. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. You see that, man? So these angels that ride in these chariots, these vehicles in which you call UFOs, they for your demise, Esau. They for your demise, you heathens. Okay? These are the weapons. <laughs> it is, you know, these are the vehicles. And I'm going to also say weapons are the most high. All right? Because it says here, Isaiah 66, 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord Yahweh shall be many, man. You know, so I, I have a few more. Um, I had a, a lot more. But, you know, for the sake of time, I'm 44 minutes in. I think this is good enough, I believe. I hope, you know, to the elect out there watching, I hope you be edified, you know, by this truth, by the word. You know, give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. You know, brothers out there, keep staying strong in the spirit. You know, continue to keep putting up those prayers, put up those curses, man. All right? And uh, pray for fewer days, man, so we can get the hell up out of here, man. You know? 
because the Lord is, is uh, showing his work, man. He's manifesting his work. You know, he's visiting this earth in which he made, man. So, you know, with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. Shalom.